Okay, so partner just left out of the front of the house to open up the garage. I left out through the back with Cass and um, we're gonna clean the van one more time. And we're going to um, do the spray paint and the sound deadener today. Reflectix, two things of spray foam, two windows, max air fan, oops, max air fan, refrigerator, two um, foam half inch things for the floor. We have the plastic core for the um, flexible solar panels, quarter, um, inch. quarter of an inch for all of the ceiling and wall paneling. This is either 15, 30 seconds or 19, 30 seconds. I think it's the other one. 15 or 17, those are the two. The 17, it's the thicker one. Here's a round toilet seat. And um, a bunch of one by threes. For the beds, yeah, one by three by eight. And then we have a bunch of goodies here. So we have Colt gun. Colt gun. Spray paint, sealant, filer, um, blades, and kit for the sink. We um, actually mopped out the whole van again, so I didn't want to film that to show you a second time. And the other thing that we did was take out as much wiring as we can. Like, I don't know if you saw a light there before. And then we had like another light right here, so we took that out. We took out this outlet, but I didn't want to show it because we didn't know what the hell we were doing. So I'm like, don't, let's not give misinformation. <laughs> and now we are spray painting, and the, there's our cat, look. In the grass, Ivan Diesel. Hey. Hey. So look at this section right here. Look at Okay, so now we're rolling on this sound editor like this. And we're sweating profusely. And I don't know how long, how, like how much time it is later, but Cass is more comfortable. She she kind of like stays to herself in the beginning and then um, as she gets out here used to the noise, she comes out more. So that's very smart, you know, especially if you have pets, try to keep them in here with the whole process even though it's loud. Um, <clears throat> so that slowly they get used to being out here. I suppose same thing with children. Don't take my child advice. <laughs> hey, Cass. Hi, baby. Oh, she looks. Here we are. This is all of the kill mat we use. We use 50 square feet um, for a 1500 wheelbase. I find that really only like 25 square feet is necessary, but you'll find other places where, um, where you're going to want to use it, like this door and underneath those black panels. Boom, right here. We completely wrap the wheel well, so it's kind of like insulation. I'm not really sure how true that is. And then we use scrap pieces there. Whenever I have more strips left over, which I have a few left, I think we're going to fill that up as well. And check out the ceiling. The Max Air Fan might go right above me, which is toward the front of the van. So we just put three half sheets on each of these panels but in a video it says that you only need to cover 25 percent of each little sheet so you know we overdid it but if you want to you can only buy one box basically we also spray painted this right here You don't know how nervous Demetri and I were for him to go up there. You don't know. Here, babe. Okay, so basically we um, we used our sound deadener to cut out a 14 by 14 so that it would be like the Max Air Fan. And this would have our four solar panels on it. I don't know if you can see it because it's very bright out here, but it's actually some plastic core. Now the horrible thing is coming back down from the ladder. Can you not talk? Okay, bye. So this is the more of the kill mat that's going on. And what Jesse had to do, because I forgot to take out that torque screw and we don't have any more of that equipment. She's making a square around it. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these squares and I actually need to epoxy up some holes. So that was from the old inverter. So I'm going to need to epoxy that. Got the JD weld, you know what I'm saying? Yep. 
this was recommended by an actual auto guy, so hopefully it's really good. And then this one, which is slightly smaller, you see that right there. So I'm gonna put some epoxy on it. So the hole is actually yeah. right there. Yeah, I always, is that your eye? Yes. Oh, oh, you're looking at the camera. So the hole's right there. I'm gonna have to take this and just put it right there. And mold that right there, so it kinda goes through all the way. All right, so this is the steel. Oh, you made that a mess. And I just, that, ooh, that just, oh, what a pet peeve. So this is the hardener right here. And we're gonna put equal parts. Look how neat that was. Oh my god. She's talking about my uh my my, my really bad job, I know. Oh, okay. Need two hands. Oh, cool. uh -huh. these holes is so that um, you know we live in the northeast of the United States and you know we get snow we get rain we get all that we get like all the major four seasons of the whole planet and we didn't want any liquid to like kick up and continue to rust this and just you know damage our little space or for animals to get in or that sort of thing and we bought the five ounce one because we thought like we needed a lot but now that we look at it you really don't just go get the one ounce save your money well it depends if you have what's that called a rust bucket don't say that we just saw the movie cars that's so mean well anyway if you have a rusty vehicle that needs a little extra assistance then you're probably gonna need the bigger one but you think saying vehicle is gonna be less insulting <laughs> <laughs> and always remember to also attach something at the bottom which we didn't do for these really small holes only some of them. I did the ones by the tires because when you're driving, especially if you have a four-wheel drive um, and all the wheels are turning, you're going to kick up a lot of that dirt and grime constantly into the floor bed of your car and it can go right up some of these holes. Sets in four to six hours, cures in 15 to 24. Feed me to the oh, 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 oh. So now we're going to remove this access panel on the back so that Dimitri can safely take out this DC plug right here, which is actually attached to the car battery and we don't want it to be attached to the car battery. We're actually going to use it and connect it to the inverter yeah. to connect our fridge. Mm -hmm. This wiring is connected to this bigger set and this bigger set goes along the whole van and it goes back to the front. So I'm going to clip this one a little further back, like about here. I'm going to clip this one a little further back here and I'm going to wire these wires through the front so we can hook them up to the fridge. It's going to go like right about there. Now we got to take all this stuff out. Can I do the next one? Why? Thank you. Why? Because I want to do something. <sighs> so like about a quarter of an inch. I get a little, don't put it so close. Like that? Mm -hmm. Am I on the wrong gauge size? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, wait, let me see. You can go the next one up. Right, and then just yank. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of sticky. Alright, cool. Woo! Okay, so all you have to do is uh, remove some of that electrical tape, wrap that tape around there, and then make sure that you cover uh, the two wires with the wire head so there's no fire or anything that starts, or at least that's what I've been told. This is how far we got with some really crappy Dollar Tree tape. Oh my god, so terrible. So this is going to be outlined for the subfloor. And it's also going to actually act as something to protect for the spray from insulation. And then all up on that wall, that's going to act as the soft wall that I'm going to create out of fabric. And some Reflectix. Okay, mm -hmm. it's going to be like zippered or magnetic. And um, so that's going to act as the outline for that. But it's also going to act as protection for the, for the spray foam insulation. Some other things that we did were actually cover this cover this and the same thing on the other side see now other work needs to be done like we have to cover up the wiring somehow boom and boom so yesterday we actually ran out of tape um, and we were using some like really cheap box tape which wasn't working so today we are kind of taping again and we're going to do some spray foam we have to tape off the rest of the wiring which we didn't complete yesterday I'm just gonna take this off because I'm actually gonna spray I'm gonna spray this wall right here. So 
that needs to be taped up, the wiring, and we have to decide what I'm spraying and what I'm not spraying today, which is challenging because there's some conduit going here all up against that ribbing all the way to the back where it actually connects like the camera, the um, the camera, the backup camera basically, and also like just lights and things like that. So I just need to decide like what the heck I'm gonna do about certain situations in this van. We don't have like a temperature gun to see how much, how hot our, our canisters are for the spray foam basically. <laughs> Your kit is going to come with these disposable gloves and they're going to come with these types of glasses. Do you see this? If you are already a glasses wearer, these are not going to work for you. They don't fit on top of glasses, okay? Um, so you're also going to need something to protect your face. They recommend one that has the filters in it that you can switch out for like small particles. Um, I already had gloves and um, these protective things. And then they're going to come with five nozzles each, okay? The yellow one is the fanning, the fanning nozzle. You can tell because it has a slit in it. The white one is the one that just goes dead on. This is the one we're going to use for some reason just so it doesn't get too crazy in here, you know? And it also comes with some lubricant for the nozzle. And it comes with a wrench to tighten what is on the, um, the thingy thing. It comes with this trigger gun already attached with these two wires on it, but you may have to attach it yourself, they said. And then down here, it comes with this white canister and red canister attached and you can pull it around by here. They recommend not pulling these by the hose. So, supposedly we're ready. We Wait. have everything taped off. And I'm gonna be the person that spray foams. Wish me luck. Ugly. <laughs> Gross. The theory Counter is Dimitri's gonna turn these two nozzles at the same time. I'm gonna unlock this trigger and I'm gonna spray into the, the bag. You ready? Good. Good, right? Alright, that's good. So now you're gonna wipe. What are you gonna wipe it on? The bag? So now we're gonna wipe this off. And we're gonna apply a little bit of lube on it. It stinks already through my little stupid mask that I'm wearing. So you're ready now. Then you put this on here, and now you're ready. I didn't hear a clip. Can you just do it? Just like, it <laughs> I'm kidding. Now, now uh, put it in there for about 10 to 15 seconds, see if it works. Oh, no, our trash can. OK. you basically I guess you could have done things a little bit more evenly to get the ceiling but we bought two cans intentionally so and just like check this out it dries pretty quickly I don't know how long I've been here but probably 20 minutes I thought she was going for it. What is she doing? I could break stuff. Yeah. So I am, when I say that I'm soaking, 
and I'm not a sweater. I'm, I'm actually the type of person that gets clammy. I don't really sweat. I am. I'm see through. That'd been funny, right? If I it actually was. was. Yeah. So like, can we just look at how shiny I is? Like, oh my god. Camera quality can't pick it up, but yeah, I think it lost like ten pounds. Okay. Dimitri's gonna do the ceiling, which good luck with that because it's gonna be a lot of spray back with that initial pressure. I'm gonna go in and rip some things out before we start though and just kinda cool down. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Um, Dimitri actually was the one who spent most of the time shaving all of the, the whole side of the you see all the jutting out ribs. Um because I have a blister and I'm like, you know, hot and stuff. So this this is where we are. A chisel works great to scrape things off of the floor. And sorry that it's dark, but um, basically I think I'm going to actually put the suit on one more time and go around. So I'm kind of like bothered by that. But I just, Dimitri doesn't really understand the ribbings and like what's being screwed into what. So I'm the one that's going to be able to bring it up to level. And yeah, here we go, part two. It's like 4.30 or more, or past that. Aside from the ceiling that I'm about to do, I just went around and made some X's on everything that I'm just gonna like spray. You see what I'm saying? So it's easier for me. And I don't have like this like weird tunnel vision that I get because I'm like really nervous to do it. So this is us doing the second spray foam. Uh, while Jesse went to go take a break, I used a saw blade to make sure that this was kind of straight and level. So now that the that this is nice and level, the ribbing, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do a second round, which Jesse's doing right now, so she can fill it up to match the ribbings to get a really good form of insulation. See, so you can see how deep we're actually gonna have to go to get that. So this is her hooking it up now. She's so good at this kind of stuff. I wish I could be her, you know. has so many skills and pays all the bills. I could just write all day. She does everything else. It's always good to hit up the wheel wells if you are going to box them out. A lot of people usually box out the wheel wells and so will we. So that's just going to be empty space there. You can actually lay it on thick. No? I don't want to lose too much of my tire in space. Got you. Be very careful that you clog everything up that you don't need sealed. We left this bag open, now it's sealed. Check it out. Basically, I have these two big blisters, like these border bubbles right here on my thumb crease and my index crease right here from holding the blade, that blade right there, and trying to shave down these walls, right? And this ceiling though. Um, so like Dimitri's home from an interview in New York, very annoying that people in New Jersey constantly want to meet in New York like New Jersey doesn't exist, like it's so annoying. Oh my god. <laughs> this is y'all's. Y'all can have him. You're gonna break that plastic suit. Okay, so my beautiful husband over here like spent an hour and 20 minutes shaving down the ribs and like all of the excess, um, excess spray foam, right? And we already started on putting down the foam on the bottom. So we like cut out the middle here, scored the cardboard, and then cut all the way through. And basically this piece is gonna go right in the center and we're gonna put foam on the edges. So we bought two of these four by eight, okay? So right now I'm just scoring because like there's no way I'm gonna be able to get this line all the way in. You moved it. I saw that I did. It's not going to be. Oh shoot, I moved it a lot. It's not going to be perfect. 
foam half inch um, poly iso down. Is that poly iso? Sure, yep. yes. Poly um, and then we have the spray foam up in all cutouts, looking like a big cauliflower, and it freaking crumbles like cauliflower. And you know, we actually like finally cut out around these vents and around the wheel wells. We tried to like add a little pieces in. Oh, sweetheart, can you um, put some electrical tape here, please? I don't know what tape is. It's in the front. Um, and then let me go up here real quick. Don't fall and die on camera. Okay. So then we put these like um, cardboard pieces right here around this so that it will protect it. I didn't protect this one right here. So if you have a Ram Pro Master, try to protect this wire because if you spray into here, boom shakalaka, it'll like go all around this. And now our sliding door just still doesn't work. So we're going to see about getting that fixed. Let me lighten this. And yeah, let me just show you the deets. When you're spraying, try to pick a pattern like so. Go around the edges first, all in the same consistency. Don't be in a rush and just go around till you reach the middle because if you do the whole idea of like left to right, left to right, left to right, what's gonna happen is certain sections are gonna bubble up more than others and it's just not gonna be as even of a coating as if it, you can do it in a, you know, like a little square like these. So that's my advice. Also mark out with a marker, um, like a black marker, where you don't want to spray and where you do want to spray so that when you're panicking and you don't want your nozzle to dry in like 30 seconds, you can, um, you know, already have those dis decisions made of which ribs you want to spray Although into. Although it doesn't always work. Yeah, it doesn't always work because, you know, you're like panicking. Well, I was. You know, like this one you don't want to spray into because it has all of the wiring components for the back lights and it also has them for the the camera, the backup camera. Show them how you can cover uh, the lighting when you can spray from around it. So I mean, you can cover it with cardboard. Um, some cardboard did get in, so I, you know, I don't really think it's some completely. Spray foam got in. Yeah, that's what I meant. Some spray foam did get in. Um, tape off these because they're very important. And um, yeah, this part right here has wiring and components, so I didn't want to get in there either. And I think I'm gonna put some if our friend has some like. What do you call that stuff? I always forget. The pink cotton candy looking stuff? A fiberglass. Fiberglass. If he has some of that, I might just stick it there just because we are in a place that has winter. As far as the flooring goes, we um, we just put one sheet down in the middle. This was my method. And I already had a cardboard template here, so I just took the edges off. Boom. So I like um, cut out the cardboard templates that were all on these three edges and I used it for a second sheet and it's enough. Two four by eights are enough to cover, you know, this floor. And now we're gonna take this template out and cut a piece of plywood out for the floor. So this is what we decided to do. Um, you know, the sheets of plywood, they only come in four feet by eight feet. I mean, like that's the biggest that you can get. So this is six feet by 10 feet. What we decided to do is think about where our traffic, like our foot traffic is gonna be. And basically there's gonna be like a big couch here with a huge desk. So that means that I could have a seam right here. Do you see this? Seam. It's gonna be under the bed. And this part we're gonna leave open so we're gonna be walking here and here. Okay, because now there's gonna be a kitchen, like counters here and a cabinet. So I felt like I feel most comfortable putting the four foot by eight foot piece this way, so that means I should cut out this for a template four feet by eight feet. That's what we're doing. Okay, Dimitri and I got right here. We have two one by three by eights down on each side so that we can saw and not cut through the floor. We have a four by eight, which is about, I think it's about 17, 30 seconds, I believe, because they didn't have half inch. Um, and then we have, we traced out our ugly little shape right here. So let's actually see the results. Have your gloves on, protecciones. Have your earplugs in, you know what I'm saying? Protect your ears. Cause I wanna hear stuff when I'm like 80. Do you like doing it? No. Do you wanna switch? Yes. All right. You heard it here, folks. So we have our installation. We traced it on this scrap piece of wood. It's going to go right here, and Dimitri's cutting out the plywood now.
Dimitri just did a test fit and it doesn't quite fit as you can see. So even with the template, the struggle is still real. Um, so now it's just a guess and check really. Yeah. So now he's doing something. I don't know what it is. Well, really all I'm doing is measuring from this side of the wall and this side of the wall. And just meeting somewhere in the middle and see if it's going to go down. Yeah. See, now that went down a little bit. Almost perfect though. Mm -hmm. Here is where we are so far. We have these two walls in and secure. We have this wall in and secure. We have the floor down and aligned, except this one, which is very wonky, but you know it's gonna stay like that. I just became New Yorker. Was that crappy? Okay. So, sliding door needs to go on, but the sliding door still doesn't open, so we should like make the template for it, but not necessarily secure it. Same thing with the side windows. I meant the back doors because we have to put two windows in here, and we also have to install the max air fan and the solar panels on the roof. It could probably happen tomorrow. Yes, so that's everything. This is what we have left. Oh my god, it's happening. It's happening. Uh, and just to give you some idea about how we secured it, we put a really thick piece of wood right here on this ribbing because the ribbing didn't come up enough to meet it. We're using one and a quarter self-tapping um, screws and this is the head of the screw. Let me actually show it to you. Construction fasteners, self-drill, drywall screws, one and a quarter inch. I think the head number is six and that's how it looks right there. We did a mixture of screwing into the ribs and screwing into like a really thick first strip right here and just a one by two first strip right here. See, and these are just screwed into the actual um, the actual steel. And then some parts are not screwed into at all because we're hoping that once cabinetry goes in and we put like these diagonal pieces of plywood here, it's gonna work out basically. But that's what we have. And the cuts are pretty nice and we didn't use any templates for them. We just kind of matched it up and we were like, okay, boom, cut here, cut here. Okay, boom, cut here, come out right here. But um, but now we're going to use templates for the door. We don't play that. And I got to say, the only one that came out really weak was our first one. Yeah, our After first one. After you do that first cut, it gets kind of easy. So my suggestion, cut a smaller piece first. Yeah. Cut a smaller piece first, start with like a back panel or something, then go large. And also, the wider the panel, the weaker it is like just the more yes. bouncy it is. This one's our strongest because it's our thinnest and this one's our second strongest. Mm -hmm. And also make sure that you have your, you know, where that other rib is because he missed twice. We just made a really shoddy cardboard template right here. We took out the door handle, which is right there. And basically we cut around all of the little specific parts, which are those two. And on this side, we just scored where where we needed to. Maybe I could show you better right here. It's sort of hard to see it, but yeah, we took a pencil and we just scored it down. And now we're gonna remove it. Okay, so this is what's going on right now. Um, Dimitri's making some shoddy studs or like, you know, of like a scrap fur strips so that we have something to connect the wall to in certain areas of the ribbing. In order to do that, we had to like scratch out like hats um, or use a chisel, some parts of the styrofoam. So we did that in multiple sections of the entire van. And basically all it's been from this point is templates, cardboard templates, and just cutting it out and trimming and trimming and sanding and trimming and sanding so, so that we were able to accomplish all of this as you can see and this is going to be covered with a big box over anyway so we didn't care that it wasn't perfect and I did this all out of scrap wood that would have otherwise gone in the trash anyway so I'm pretty okay with it I think we did a great job here's some details of it sorry the lighting is cuckoo and here's this wall which we started and we also have the bottom piece already cut up but we need some some um, insulation down there. I did these cuts. I know it's cute, right? It's cute. Pow, pow. These cuts, it didn't go all the way to the top. We didn't account for that, even though we had the wood for it. And then we have this section right here. 
which this is all going to be covered as well like cabinets galore there's that section don't don't turn over here babe can you can you stop Did you see that? Oh my god, that bothers me. His he he has this thing where his kneecap pops out of place if he goes into like acute angles with his knee and then he pops it back in. It's so sick. Um. And sometimes it doesn't work for whatever reason. You're by a screw? No. Yeah, you were by a screw. But I was above it. Yeah. I'm biased through still. Well, now you're further. Mm. Could just be this one. Mm. Uh, stuff like that happens. Wow. And stuff like that happens. Step one, determine where your fan's gonna go. Step two, make sure you wipe all the debris off and let it dry. Alcohol is best because it um, dries very quickly. The best thing to do now is to see where your frame is gonna go because you don't want it to fall on any weird ridges and mess up the butyl tape and the properties that make it waterproof. So is that good? Yep, that's good. We cut out a really garbage cardboard template. template. Next step is to drill your four pilot holes so that you have a guide for the saw. Yay, there's a hole. So of course our drill bits suck. So Dimitri's trying multiple methods to try to um, make the holes bigger so that it'll fit the jigsaw blade in because that's really you need it to be the diameter of the blade hi Dimitri hi so I cut under on purpose because I didn't want to overshoot it um, I didn't think of how I was gonna go back and cut around those little edges so I'm gonna start just chipping away at it until it looks like something that we're supposed to have. I messed up a lot further down than I did on the side here. So if you always, if you feel like you got to go back in, a good idea is to try to find a corner. Try to find a corner where you could tuck the thing in and then just cut around it. And kind of like what you do with the wood, just keep going back and uh, seeing if it's good or not. Isn't the sky beautiful? Oh my god. Isn't it gorgeous? What kind of clouds are those, Angelique? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Take your tape off and start wiping down the entire van because those shards are gonna get everywhere. Look, they all collected right here. They Look, they all fell right there. So before it rains, Dimitri has to hit that out because it's gonna rain tonight. Which is probably not the best time to put this uh, vent on, is it? He drilled, pre-drilled holes right there. Put some self-tappers because our drill bits are trash. And now he's putting on a layer of butyl tape all around the framing of the, um, the vent. The butyl tape is for a sealant or like waterproofing. It's this like really sticky type of um, tape. Very tacky. Very tacky. These four stubby screws are to screw into the sides of the, the actual fan itself. And then you're gonna be given four of these screws with the white heads on the bottom. It's kind of like a wafer screw. And this is to screw into the actual framing which if you don't have an RV this is super thick so you're going to need to cut it. So the other 16 go in the ceiling which Dimitri is doing right now and as you can see one two three four are going to be the four really short stubby screws. Brand new $16 bottle of Sikaflex. Dimitri just cut it. Is that how it goes? You could pull that silver thing. This thing? Yeah. Pull it? Pull it and then just stuff the. Oh, I see. There you go. Yo, so smart. It's like, nah, I just haven't used one of these. Okay. It's hard to get the pressure. What the hell is this thing made of steel? Now he's covering up all of the, um, the screws. All 16 screws. 
You want to turn your, you want to open up your fan first with the black knob, right? Because it's manual. And those four holes, there's two on this side and two on the other, are going to go into these four clips right here. Face it backward. Dimitri was like, do I face it forward or backward? And I'm like, really? Is that really a question? Is it really a question, Dimitri? Dimitri. Who knows what's forwards and backwards anymore? He's been up on that roof for hours. Let me show you the sky. This is the dumbest day ever. Do you see how gray the sky is, guys? The cloud is like, girl, we not playing with y'all. Like, we're literally about to get cracking. And I'm like, seriously, Sky, this is not the day, honey. Yo, oh my it? God, look at that. Oh my God. The first step to installing your windows are to take out your windows and unscrew the four um, screws that come screwed in. And then you're going to trace around on a piece of cardboard, right? Here, let me show you because this is the confusing part right up against this edge right here of the trim ring see that just like that so then you have your cardboard template you're gonna actually find the center I think for ours it's like 2.75 and 2.75 1.25 and 1.25 inches and then you're just gonna stick this on here which we use tape to help us keep it leveled on both sides so you want to make sure that you're one point 25 right here and 1.25 right there 2.75 right here and 2.75 right there just so that you're making sure to keep it level and then you're just going to trace around it with a permanent marker and we're going to get ready to drill the eight pilot holes that are required so Dimitri's on the other side um, drilling forwards and backwards trying to get the um, the drill hole as close to the perimeter of the sharpie line that we made as possible. So we actually forgot the tape. So this is what happens if you skip the taping step. We just you, you start our scratching. Metal. That's so bad. You start scratching your wall up. Two layers. Of skin, so. Which. Which is true, right? Yeah, no, but I'm talking about the whole scratching up. So the scratching up, it's not good. Three sides of this window are cut out. See that? Dimitri's about to go in. Boom. And I have to hold this. Where's Jesse? No way. So because we're cheap. Well, not we. Because I'm cheap. Let me not throw us into this. Um, we spray painted this cap as a rust preventative instead of buying like real stuff. And basically, I'm just like brushing it over all this raw steel because you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want it to rust later on. Now I'm gonna go in there and just hit up that side. Before this, we actually wiped all of this down with some alcohol and a clean rag to take off all of the little chips that can cause rust. Look at the precision. The Look at the finesse. Steel. I say finesse in Spanish. Finesse. Finesse. I make up every word I want to. It's finesse. I hope you're right. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm it just would taking be cool this. If finesse was a feminine word. Finesse. You know yeah, saying? that's right. Power to the people. This is some one quarter of an inch thick by half an inch wide um, closed cell phone window insulation tape. You can find it on Amazon, eBay, wherever. Um, if you buy it from actual websites that sell these windows, they are like double, triple the price and they take forever to get here. So it's crazy don't expensive. Do it. um, here's the trick. You ready for the trick? You ain't ready. Okay. I'm not ready. <laughs> You're ready, babe. No, you keep it straight right now. Five years new. She's going to start on the edge. That's some pro shit right there. Wait, this is in the right tape. This is supposed to be gluey on both sides. Yeah. So this is the wrong tape. The ones in all the videos, were they sticky on both sides? This didn't come with directions, did it?
la más importante is this. Boom, go over this part by a half an inch. So we have some Sikaflex 221 um, in white, Hard and stuff this is white. like $16. It's an adhesive and a sealant. So we just did this really sloppily onto this color plast or plasticor, and then we just glue the solar panels down onto it to try to give it some breathing room. We don't know if this is going to work. It's all theory because people don't really live in their van long enough to really see if these things work, but... I felt most comfortable trying this instead of trying to glue it right onto the um, the roof. Anyway, let me help Dimitri place by. So anyways, now it's placed, you know, straight onto it. This is a 4x8 sheet. These panels are like 21 by 46 or something like that. So it works out pretty good. You just need one $20 plastic sheet. And then very lightly, while it's um, drying, we just, you know, I put my hand into each quadrant because it kind of fits perfectly. And I press down. I try to press down the same pressure. Okay, so we're just going to let these dry. We ran out of a Sikaflex anyway. One tube is good for this and a max air fan, and that's it. And really, we did kind of a loose job on this, right? So it would have been nice to have a little bit more. Hi, gorgeous people. So Demetri and I put on the, um, the bottom of the sliding door yesterday and this floor, which is not completely laid down, but that's what we got done yesterday. Today, we're working on the bed frame. But we're struggling with it because we ran out of screws, so we had to go get some more. Um, so yeah, and it's like not level, it's all messed up, but it's coming along, guys. I want to show you everything that we're going to use to hook up our four 100 watt um, flexible solar panels on top of the roof. First, what we did is we bought one entire tube of Sikaflex, um, which is an adhesive and a sealant, which is very unique because they're usually either one or the other. Um, and we got it in white and it's very difficult it like breaks our caulk gun it's because it's so strong i don't know if it's old but that's what it is and then i showed you previously that we um we put some corrugated plastic look at these like beige spiders you see them there's two they're friends um we like put the sycoplex on the back and and put it here so we could try to have some sort of airflow so that they're not directly on the hot metal roof and then we have these extensions right here which you can't see but a female and a male positive and negative extension for the solar panels we got a very small amount of feet 10 feet so then we have four male and female um mc4 connectors which can link these in parallel or series all together which Dimitri will show you and um we have some gorilla tape to tape down the wires all the excess this part right here we have this let me show you. This actually helps to only bring two cords down into the van instead of like all 100. So it connects all one male and one female together. This looks like garbage, but it's like $13. So respect it. <laughs> and then we have a drill to drill the two holes in the van for this. We have a very horrible paintbrush that's already used with some spray paint to try to do some rust prevention with a lid so we can spray into the lid. Some alcohol so we can clean everything before you glue and before you put anything up there it should be like clean of any debris and then we have some old like t-shirts or rags and then we have ooh, we have a colt gun and drill bits so i just want to show you the solar panel connections really quick so you see this red it has like a red o-ring on it it has a little positive indentation on it and then the the male or the negative has an, an indentation and no red o-ring see it goes inward and then this one goes outward positive negative okay and then you're going to connect them with these mc4 connections which tell you positive and positive negative so you just put the ones that look opposite into it like this and then it becomes this one and then for an extension you want to put this one so hopefully that makes sense um, when you get them. People usually don't show these up close, so I, I had to like just figure it out. So the most windy day was chosen of all the year to put these flexible solar panels up. And the struggle has been real. Dimitri's guessing where the ribs are. And he switched over to quad sealant because he ran out of Sikaflex 
for three panels. So yeah, man, that Sega Flex jar does not come with a lot of stuff. It's quite annoying. But there are four solar panels up on the roof and they each have a positive and a negative. So you're gonna take the positive from A and B and you're gonna just connect it with an MC4 connector. It's gonna have one little output like I showed you earlier. Then you're gonna take the negatives from A and B and you're gonna do the same thing. And now there's one positive and one negative on this side. You're gonna do the same things for C and D. So connect C's positive to D's positive. It's gonna have one now. So now how many positives do you have total? Two, you have A and B's positive connecting. You have C and D's. And you have the same thing for A and B's negatives connected and C and D's connected. So then you're gonna connect those two together so that you just have one positive from A and B and C and D and one negative and then it's going to go inside of your entry gland. Dimitri just drilled these two holes into the van and he put the extension cord for the solar panels through here through this hole. It's very long. Man, so I am definitely a writer. This has been so complicated for me. I'm holding it down with books. For some reason, the Sikaflex still isn't really holding it down. It might be because it's so hot. Like, we have a breeze, but I'm dying up here. It's so hot. Well, anyway, uh, I got all these connectors going. So I got all the, the negatives to the negatives. I got the positives to the positives. It's running parallel. And then I put that little nut piece right there. And then I got the positive and negative snaking through here. And then at the end of that, this piece has to screw them all in, which is right down there. Okay, so it's not a smart idea to do this while the sun is beating down on you. You should wait till the evening because the sealant and adhesive don't do well under these extreme conditions, especially because the roof of the van is hotter than it actually is outside. And those two holes in which Dimitri's elbow's on, he's like standing there pressing them down where if we did this at night where the roof wasn't like steaming hot, it would have stuck better and he wouldn't have to be up here with all these books and things. Whew, I'm tired. And um, it also helps to have the max air fan open because if not, it'll be in the way. But yeah, this is a 136 and four solar panels fit on top. So that's good. So here's where we are in our lives. Um, Dimitri and I have been absent on the camera because I'm supposed to be doing the camera. Um, and I just had an attitude problem and a half because stuff is getting tough. But um, I cut this floor out. Um, this is a vinyl sheet of flooring. It's like 94 cents per square foot, I believe. And Dimitri got these trim edging for free. One of them is silver. The other one is two gold pieces connected. So that's how that looks. I love the floor. I'm, we're going to try to leave this raw wood and not paint it, but if it gets to a point where everything's looking very, very ugly, then I guess we will paint it, but we'd rather polyurethane it in a clear coat. We built this very shoddy um, wheel wall cover out of scrap pieces of 2 by 2s and fur strips. And we plan on putting facing over it, like, and more scrap wood that we just have just to cover it, um, so that we can use the top to hold water, basically. And then on this side, this is an even shoddier job of a wheel well cover, which we're going to try to figure out how to secure it better. And this is why this morning, Dimitri went and got um, two inch brackets so that we can really secure it to the walls and to the floor to see if that will make it stronger. So. This side is actually going to hold the batteries, which are 180 pounds, and we don't know like how that's going to turn out. But the other way I plan on securing it is that this is going to be a desk, and there's going to be this big piece of wood right here. So I plan on zoo, 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 like into the edge of the desk, and hopefully that will secure it some more. If we could somehow figure out how to attach it to the fixed leg of this bed frame that we built, then I feel like that may be substantial, and then put um, pieces of wood on top to make it secure and balanced. The entire skeleton of this van has been my favorite to do and now that it's furniture building it's really pissing me off. <laughs> so we built this bed frame. 
out of really fat two by threes and these free ikea slap that somebody just threw out like literally our neighbor just threw out so we we're like you know let, let's use this and return the one by threes that we had then our friend gave us some two by threes because we actually made this out of first strips originally first strips and two by twos which are all of these pieces and our friend was like, who's going to sit on that? Who's going to be able to sleep on that? And he was like, no, you guys are going to fall through. And first strips are horrible because they splinter and crack over time. So especially like in a moving vehicle, it's just not smart. So we were like, oh my God. So then he gave us all these really thick pieces. They were number one, really hard to cut. Number two, we didn't have the proper screw sizes for them. Um, so it was a really hard time. But this is basically how the bed works. And it's shorter now unfortunately it was 48 inches wide but since these two had first strips here and we switched them to two by threes um they ended up being 44 inches wide now so that is a complete bummer and then um you want all of these legs to be floating the ones that are on the slider and you want those legs in the back to be at a higher height basically but the other bad thing is like when we close it it doesn't close like nicely and smoothly you see this because these pieces of wood get stuck on top of the other thing so either a notch out where all of those fixed pieces are going to slide into the moving part or b put washers in between so that you could raise it up a little bit this will probably be a project that we do later on because we just did the bed two times in a row and it really angered me um so it's probably gonna be something we fix on the road um, down the line hopefully because I just don't want to be bothered I want to move on with the rest and just go on a vacation basically Atención class is in session this is the desk that we're building right which ultimately is going to look something like this but we have all the measurements out so the top is going to have this strip in the back that's gonna have these hinges on it it's gonna have four hinges one two three four and it's gonna have two lids a his and hers lid basically um, so that we can put all of our stuff inside then it's gonna have the bottom piece the big side piece the other side piece which is over a wheel well and a center beam so that these have something to fall on and that's what we're about to build right now wish us luck this is what we did today besides the solar system on top which Dimitri did um, we put those two hinges in the back so that we can access a you know contents of the desk this way um, and then we have a divider in the middle and we need to put one face here the other thing that happened is we were able to secure the wheel well a lot more than before because we um, screwed it to the sides of each side of the desk basically I could put something here to fasten this if I felt like it right because it drops so I could put something there to fasten it and I could have like a to-do list here or a cork board where I have like all the tasks I need to do while I'm pulling out my laptop and my journal for the day so I'm just like you know thinking about cute stuff that I could do later well, hi bye bye everyone bye see you next time <laughs> hi how are you this is our van look at that little family right there of people and cats um, so Cass is out today, which we have not let her come out in so long um, because there's just been so much sawing and she doesn't like loud noises. This is a super loud street, so every single time a loud car passes by or a bus, she gets spooked. But she wants to go outside, which she's mistaken. Um, and basically, this is how messy everything looks right now. But down, right? Why I came on here was to tell you that Dimitri had to edit the wheel well and it is taking forever and a day as per everything else. Um, because we figured out once we started putting the batteries and the solar charge controller in and stuff that we needed to edit the entire way that we thought that the solar was going to go in. And this is like how it looks now. It's actually just over the wheel well and now there's this like empty gap there. Seems small but it's actually very important because the the inverter is going to be up in that section and I needed the height for it. Hey, you can't. Let me do it. we also, I also didn't know what 170 pounds felt like. Right. Well, it's so 180, but yeah. I really had to, it was 75 to 80. That's, that's a lot of weight. Yeah. So I had to make sure this was reinforced. We basically have about seven different wires that are important that's where they're highlighted the orange is positive which is red and the green is negative which is black um so these are the wires that we have to get made by our friend he's going to order them for us to be pre-cut so that i can return a lot of stuff and get my money he's going to do it for free which oh i realize i need a connection right here as well anyways so yeah two gauge negative to the battery and the negative on the inverter and then positive bolts on fuse 2 gauge positive to a 200 amp um, 
kind of like a circuit breaker. And that's going to go to 4 gauge positive to the inverter. Got that part? Cool. So that's those are both going to this terminal. Now off the negative terminals of the inverter, there's going to be three wires. One wire is going to be 2 gauge negative and it's going to be connecting to the negative battery. One of the wires is going to be a 4 gauge negative and it's going to be connected to the solar charge controller. These two ends do, do not need lugs. Everything else needs lugs, which lugs, am I saying that right? I think that they're called um, terminal, like end terminal clamps or connectors or something like that. And then the third one is going to be a four gauge negative going up to the negative part of the fuse box. This positive right here is a four gauge positive going to a 200 amp circuit breaker. See how it's going here to here. And it's also going to go up here, four gauge positive up to the positive point on the fuse block. So that's how those are connected. A positive one is going to go from the inverter, four gauge positive, to a 50 amp um, circuit breaker to 6 gauge it went down lower because the the solar charge controller doesn't need anything too hefty positive boom right into that terminal those are the most important components of this um, but there are also other wires like the positive and negative to the solar panels and then the mt50 connector all the way up and then there is a temperature sensor that, that it comes with that's supposed to be put on the negative um, battery not on the actual terminal but actually connected to the negative wire and the last thing is a 12 gauge grounding plug so that's going to go from the solar charge controller boop it's going to connect to the grounding part of the inverter and then it's going to come up and go to the grounding part of the fuse block so that connects all of those and that's basically our solar system we have everything we need for it except for the battery um, cables which are all of the orange and green which we have to order and that's it let's see how it works you'll see it when it's actually in real life and not in theory there's a kitty Today is disappointingly slow. Um, all we did was like really put this door in as perfect as we possibly were able to do it. All of these weird little notches for that part. It's very challenging. This is one of the hardest parts of the van that I was avoiding. We actually took the window out again because we thought that we could flip this trim ring around because you are able to in RVs, but it's just far, it's too far away right here toward the bottom if you can see that so now we're left with this like super ugly gap um, which we need to think about if we're gonna even bother fixing it if not it's gonna just stay as is um, and then here's how this side looks which it looks extra dirty now because we siliconed the um, the thing in place for extra security so uh, there is our door now we have to do this one which is a dread and um, that's pretty much as far as we got since yesterday. We also hooked in our entire solar system basically except for the inverter which we feel is too heavy to put on here with the screws that we have so Dominique she's going to go figure that out. Um, but yeah that's pretty much it and we were supposed to do the entire cutouts for the kitchen today but that also didn't happen and tomorrow it's going to rain so we're just like super far behind and Dimitri has his first meeting with his brand new job tomorrow so boom. I will see you all in a few because we got to get to work since we just spent two hours eating and cooking. Look at the kitty! Oh my god, she's laying on the bed. And the cat though, and the cat though, the There's Dimitri, hard at work. Forever and forever. Forever and forever. Look, the two doors are in. The windows are silicone. The the windows are taped up for 24 hours. The desk is in. The bed is in. We're working on the water jug area. The inverter is not put in yet. We don't have screws there along, like, you know, heavy enough, Dimitri says. I think we could just use the screws that we have. And basically, we're just like, what is that word called? It starts with an M. Meandering? No, we're just like MacGyvering. Some, like, extra fur strips and random pieces of wood together to put over the wheel well so it can hold the 80 pounds of water which is not as bad as the battery section um, but it really the wheel well really can't be secured until tomorrow which is gonna rain but whenever is the next day that we can start okay here is sort of like the kitchen setup in between this um, desk that we created right so we're gonna have the fresh water right here and the gray water right there. In the back, we're gonna have the water pump because it's really loud. So I'm gonna try to find a way to, to um, sort of sound dead and what's happening back there. We built this shelf over the wheel well so that it would be useful. Um, 
And then this is fastened by an L bracket and it's fastened to that leg right there. We're gonna put a counter on top so it'll fasten it even further because it's a bit shaky. This one is not so shaky. Um, we have a shelf drilled in right here, all the way to this side. And, um, and it's also sitting on that first strip which is actually on a, oh you can't even really see it. But it's sitting on that first strip which is actually connected to a rib and the wheel well is extended out here which was never a part of my plan originally so i was like oh wow look i got some new space like after it was built here's our refrigerator in place so that's how it'll open not like all the way unless we cut out that part which actually we already built over this so that's not going to happen and then right here we have another first strip connecting to that rib so this one is shaky as well this one is not so much and again we have like three screws on the sides that has like this shelf connected to it. That's our cat's litter pan. And then up here we're just gonna have some storage. I don't know what specifically. Um, after the countertop goes on, it should stabilize, like I said before. Um, we got this Findig sink, which was like $32, but um, they were like, oh, do you want the strainer? And then Dimitri said no, but we have to go back and get the strainer because it's free, but it's just packaged separately. But that's such a dumb question to ask. Just give us the damn strainer. Um, because I didn't want like a strainer as like what I really think a strainer is. I want like, ugh, whatever. And then here is our faucet, um, from Amazon. So, maybe we can shower. Well, me, Dimitri wants to shower at the gym. So, that's it. You'll see it all assembled because we actually have the countertop cut out now. We're just going to put it on top. The weather out here has been very intense. It's been 107, 109, and then 113, right? And Dimitri and I really haven't gotten any work done out here. And then it just started pouring for two days straight, and, and it got a lot cooler. So um, we're going to do some solar. Um, this is like, we got all this wire right here for free. Um, we are borrowing these pliers from another friend and the socket set. And then we had to pay for all of these lugs right here. And we got some 12 gauge grounding wire as well. So I'm going to start working on the sizes that are needed. Um, the sink isn't going to go here, but it fits quite perfectly, right? <laughs> um, Dimitri's actually getting the inverter in, but it's such a tight spot that it was kind of like stupid to put it um, right up against the edge of the desk. This is the Findig sink. Findig sink. So it's super lightweight, great for a van build. Um, we had to do all of this random stuff. Dimitri did all this by himself yesterday. Um, because our counter is not one and one eighth inch thick, it's only 0.50. So he had to build it up with these things that we found on the side of somebody's house that were that like they were gonna throw out, um, and then put these clips on, and then we put like silicone down here, um, wiped it all around with like plastic on my finger. It's really crappy in a lot of parts, but. We were hoping that like that would add extra waterproofing. We don't know. We never installed the sink before. Um, I saw some videos, but this Findig one is so different from the videos that I watch. So it was really like a matter of having a guess, which a lot of this van build was. Um, and as you can see, one of the clips are missing because the screws get stripped like really bad. So what's happening right now is we're trying to um, connect these terminals to the the gate, like this wire. Um, and we're doing a pretty shitty job with it. So this one was hammered yesterday between a piece of cardboard and two hammers, right? Um, one hammer kind of like laying flat on it like this. And then, then the other hammer exhibit, boom, banging like that. But this wrap between paper so that it doesn't like, um, damage it. And then Dimitri saw this video saying that you could use a flathead. So he tried to use a flathead. And it just like punctured too deep because we don't have like a gigantic ass flathead that's like a foot and a half long. Now we're trying this new method, um, which Dimitri's struggling with, where you, you, you do the same hammer thing, but we're using this to see if it will crimp, which is a replaceable screwdriver flathead set. So we bought these um, these copper lugs. They come in two packs um, for the two gauge wire. They're five sixteenths in diameter right here. And basically, what we did is like we had this wire that our friend gave us, um, and we cut it, which I did not have the strength to do with this right here, which another friend gave us to borrow. Um, it's so old and difficult. Like, look at this. So right here on this circular part, you just like, you chop the whole thing. And then he gave us this other plier right here, which is the same effect. Um, 
and you just like slide it around so that it cuts the insulation I don't go all the way through because I get really afraid to cut the threads and I feel more safe going around very very lightly and just you know shaving at it until I start to see the these like copper wire pieces and then I just pull it off with this and I keep pulling it off and pulling it off and then I get all of these pieces right here which is all the insulation that I cut yesterday. It's very painful for my, my little knuckles and stuff. Um, and then after that, you know, you can twist these um, and then you slide this on. And now we're gonna go into phase two. Hi, good rising everyone. So we haven't seen you in a few days because we've had a heat wave and then we had three days of a heat wave, three, three days of a rainstorm and mosquitoes have been out like crazy. It's been very humid. Um, the weather has been just like absolutely off the hook so um, we've gotten a lot done since the last time we saw you the solar system works officially um, a lot of running around to get the proper and terminal connectors and my suggestion after getting them from local hardware so stores um, is to buy them online because you can you can buy them for like $16 for a pack of like 56 pieces rather than um, buying each individual piece that you need from like AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts which makes them like $4.79 a pack for just like a pair at a time. So it ends up coming out to, we spent $30 on just like copper and terminal connectors and that's ridiculous compared to $16. I'm going to show you every single new thing that we've done. First of all we've done all of our cabinet faces which are right here. Um, it's very simple. We just took a piece of half inch, see how rough it is, and we just put these really cheap hinges on them. And then instead of buying knobs or handles, we just um, took, I think, a one inch drill bit and just drilled a hole into each section. So that is how it looks. My partner did this cute cat cutout for what's going to be the litter box. So that's very exciting and we made these like fake drawers which are not like cabinet grade um, and they look like this. They're us grade. <laughs> they just slide. They are not on any sliders as you can see and um, we just have some strap wood here all over. Um, everything is a quarter of an inch except for the front which is half an inch wood and it's very rough. Oh my gosh, rough construction. And we did that to two sides, basically. And then on this side, we made this like pull down, which I'm hoping to put like a plastic thing here so we can hold like our dish brush. And we have this part, which holds all of our water on top of the wheel well. We have the water pump there, um, which my partner is working on wiring. We also need an ABS pipe. Um, another piece to that. Okay, that's a PVC pipe. I don't know if ABS and PVC are. ABS? Oh yeah, okay, PVC. And then we have all of this wire that my partner's working on. Dimitri is working on electricity. So there's that. He got the Max Air Fan to work and he's been struggling with the lighting because it needs to be attached to a switch. So that's that involves like an extra step that everything else doesn't involve. So it's a little bit more difficult to understand, especially with the switches that we got, which and I thought which, we were gonna be <laughs> using 14 gauge wire and those 12 gauge wire so all the little attachments and stuff I brought with the 14 gauge. Yeah so it, it's a lot of been like running to the store and returning and like we said like he spent so much money on each packet of these like end terminals. If you buy them on Amazon they're $10.99 for like 140 so just do that. We did that but then we returned it because we thought our, like our friends were going to give it to us for free so we were like why bother but then they didn't have the size that we needed so we ended up just like screwing ourselves over. If you are going to try to buy these at like your hardware store or like a big box store, the local mom and pop hardware stores are going to be the best though mm -hmm. because they'll actually give you a deal for these fuses and for these different terminal and ring connectors and stuff instead of spending all that money in another place. Yeah, like not advanced auto parts in AutoZone. Yeah, if you talk it's, to them, they're pretty helpful. Mm -hmm. And they'll want to see your van too. Mm -hmm. And then like th this is just to show you our system. <clears throat> it's about 1 p.m. I think right now. So our solar is getting 19.2 volts and 0.8 amps. And the battery is happy. Um, we actually put our fan on at night 
on super super high for 45 minutes and it drained our battery to 50% so that was ridiculous <laughs> Okay, we also built these drawers, which is a unique mechanism that I found online. Um, and that involves us putting one piece of wood down horizontally and one vertically right next to it, creating an L shape, um, which you can sort of see better right there. And it allows um, it to glide without messing up the floor. Like, sorry, this box is in the way. See how it just like glides back and forth? It's very rough, but we're not like cabinet builders and that's how the inside looks it's the same as the other drawer and this one is a quarter of an inch all around so we did that for that part and that part and then right here we built let me fix the light this like fake toilet box which this side is half an inch this is half an inch the top is half an inch and the front and back are a quarter of an inch and we have it on this hinging mechanism that opens and it's just exposed to the floor which i might fix later i'm i just need scrap wood after dimitri does electricity we will move on to putting the rest of the ceiling up after the ceiling goes up we'll put these diagonal walls up on both sides we already built a bookshelf for this side and a mason jar shelf for this side and then we will put in a piece of wood back there a piece of wood right here and if we have leftover, which I don't think we will, we want to cover up those two back walls. And that's it. Woohoo, check it out. Um, we have the last piece of the ceiling that we need to put in, which I'm gonna say right now is very challenging, you guys. And I don't see how people do this without another person. Um, but I'm gonna explain to you how it's done. You, you sort of like cut away at your panel, like you're sort of scoring and you're like notching it in to get it to a certain point. Um, and just taking away from it until it can be flat enough. And then you get your lights. <laughs> you're gonna figure out how you want to wire them and you need to cut it out. Um, we also like wired the lights before and then forgot that we needed to completely disconnect them um, for them to be able to work, right? So then my partner did a wiring job, um, which is right here. And we came up with this idea on the last panel using the saw horses, so that sucks. The, the other time I was just holding it up while he was wiring. <laughs> And it was deadly. Um, and then after that, you know, you just pop in the wires on the back. You do the faceplate on the front and things like that. And and then somebody holds this up while the other person's screwing. So I'm usually the holder because... Um, you prefer holding and screwing. Yeah, screwing is very challenging um, into the metal van. So I prefer not to do it. It actually gives me a lot of anxiety, right? Well, the thing is you just don't keep the drill straight. Thank you. And there's your tip of the day. Keep the drill straight. <laughs>